I'm back on hammer number two. I hope the air conditioner is not too loud because it's right there. <laughs> but uh, I got it as parallel to the vise as I can. I do have padded jaws in there. Got her in there pretty tight. I darkened the head again so I can just start. Try to move this a little closer to the center of the vise here. See if that'll be a little more stable. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to try to work just on this, kind of, kind of flattening things out just until I get rid of that. starting to look pretty good right here. So now the center part here is pretty flat. My divot's out of there. I'm going to start just kind of tapering the edge a little. And to some people, this seems like a lot of work to go through for a hammer. Just so that you got something you can use for your leather work. It's actually something that I enjoy doing. Now I'm going to flip the hammer around so that I can work the other side of it. You may wonder why I'm doing the sides of the face. I use the sides of the face from time to time when I get into a spot and I'll take another hammer or something else and I'll put the two together. This is a trick from doing body work. You'll use a dolly and then you'll hit it with a hammer to straighten out some metal. Sometimes you get a spot where you need to get, get your glue and you need to set your glue and I'll use two hammers to do it. So I like to keep the sides of the head nice too. So we'll polish that too. The face is pretty much where I want it as far as the filing goes. The rest will get done with uh, sandpaper grits. I'll use 220 and then I'll probably jump down to 350 or 400. And then we'll work our way down to 600 probably, maybe 1000. And we'll get to some uh, rouges for polishing. Right now, I'm just going to go around the sides. I'm not going to make you watch all of that. 
and uh, we'll get that in the same shape as the face and then we'll get to the uh, sandpaper. I pretty much have everything. Now I'm going to go around and I'm going to hold my file. I'm going to try to hold it at about this angle all the way around. I darkened the head again just with some marker. And I want to keep my file going as straight onto it as I can. Of course, where the handle's in the way, that's going to be impossible. And as long as I keep my angle about the same, it'll show me any places that I might need to uh, do a little extra work on. Just to get my radius all the same around it. take it out, take a better look at it. It's pretty even all the way around. So I think I got that pretty good. I'm going to touch up a little more around the edges. And that's going to be about it. I went around the sides, got that pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and touch up a little bit around the edges. And then I'm going to move on to some 220. Almost forgot about this end. All I need to do is kind of smooth things out up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and you know, just follow the same contour that's here. And I'm going to flatten it out and then I'm going to taper the edges. <clears throat> well, that's pretty good so far. I'm just going to go ahead and round off the edges. And I think we'll be in pretty good shape. At least on this part. This is a form that I use for uh, like Leatherman sheets and stuff. Um, it works good for this one particular one works good for the smaller Leathermans. I have a, an original Leatherman PST that uh, I like to use a lot. But it works really nice for <laughs> a backing, a sanding block. And now I'm just going to go around this and get all the file marks out with some 220 grit. And I'm going to try to stay all in one direction. It'll take a little bit, but uh, it's worth it. You saw how the other hammer turned out if you watched that video. I've got two more after this. And hopefully they, it's got a divot in here somehow. Hopefully, I'll get it out with the 220 and I won't have to get the file back out. Because right now, most of the hard work is done. The divot that was in the face of the hammer really stunk on ice. All that, oh, that's a deep scratch, too. Hopefully I can get it out with this. But 
that's all there is to it. Just keep working at it. Try to go all in one direction. That way when you switch your grit, you'll go in the opposite direction. And try to get all those out. And then you keep switching directions as you go, as you reduce your grits, and it'll take it all out. I don't know if you'll be able to see that nick in the in the face there. Maybe I can zoom you in on it. See that nick right there? I may have to take the file to it because I can catch it with my fingernail. Darn it. Oh well, we'll get that out of there. So this is the 220 grit done on both ends here. It's a long who hammer. I have another one of these. Well, another one of this brand. I'm going to take and take a file across the top here. This is kind of rough. It's standing a little proud. Not a big deal. But this has got kind of a small handle. Even for my... I got short fingers, but I got a pretty good sized hand. A little small. And we'll, we'll do a leather wrap around that. Cut some lace. We'll do a little bit of cool stuff there. That's going to be a separate video. But there you go. It's not the greatest steel. Uh, there goes the air conditioner again. But the scratch came out of the uh, face. It took a little work. Is what it is. But other than that, it's looking pretty good. I rounded the edge here. Not. It's not super flat. It's a little, a little rounded. You can probably tell there. It looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. That's all 220. So I'm ready to move on to the 400 grit. And I'll do that much the same. I'll just take it and I'll wrap it around my piece of leather here. And doing the head, I can take it in my hand and when I put some pressure on it, it'll curve it so it does a nice job just on the head here because I can just kind of get it this way and get a little curve to it. So when I start going over it, <laughs> a little shiny, it'll kind of keep some of that profile to it. But, that's the next step, going over with 400 grit until we get rid of the 220 scratches. Then I'll move on to 600 grit. I'm probably not going to show any of that, just because it's more of the same as all it is. Sanding. Gets rid of the scratches the net up from the previous grit, and you keep going down grits. I will see what it looks like after 600 grit. I may go straight to the polishing wheel after that. And I'm just going to use my Dremel to do that. My rotary tool, not a Dremel, it's a rotary tool. I don't have a Dremel brand. That's where I'm at. Right. Well, there's the 600 grit. And I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think I'm going to bother with 1,000. I'm going to take it over to the uh, rotary tool and see what it looks like after a little uh, compound on there. And see if that shines up nice and if it polishes up good. I'm going to call it good. If not, we'll take it some a little thousand grit to it. Oh, I thought I had a rag right here. Apparently not. I left a few scratches behind that I can see. You might not be able to see them in the camera. But I'm going to give it a... I might crank the speed up just a little bit, give it a little more, and uh, see what happens.
well get this in too while we're at it. Well, that looks pretty. That's a mirror polish there. There might be a couple of light scratches in there. Other than that, I think that looks pretty darn good. <laughs> and that's passable right there. Alrighty folks, hammer number three. It's another long who. What can I say? It is what it is. So we're gonna, there's kind of sharp edges on here. I'm gonna probably hit them with some sandpaper a little bit and I won't get too carried away on them just kind of take them down a little but the face is eh, I don't know looks like it might have a divot in there up in here a little bit so we'll put it in a vise just like we did the last one get it in there as straight as we can and tight and we'll color it up Now you can use that die cam marking fluid. I don't know. I've always had good luck with just a marker. I'm just kind of going over it light because I wanted to take off the marker and the, the good flat surface of the file will kind of just leave the low spots showing. So, there's a couple of low spots, but I can tell that they're not very deep. So I should be able to get those out in relatively short order with a file. I don't think it's going to take much at all. Chuck it up good and tight in the vise. Now and again I like to kind of brush off my file a little bit, cleans all the chips out of it. Now by keeping going in different directions, 
kind of keep the same curvature to the head. I think I'm at a point now I'm going to start kind of rounding the edge a little bit. Now I do have a sander and I can do this with a sander. What I am trying to avoid is the sander has a tendency to overheat the metal and any temper that is in the metal I don't want to remove. So I'm sticking to the file because if I work it slower I won't overheat the metal. I had forgotten I had a couple of belts that broke on me on the sander. I had a couple of cheap belts that I don't know, I never, you should never buy cheap belts if you can afford better belts. These are just cheap ones, they're kind of like emery cloth. I went over with some 80 grit. That really shortens up the amount of time to change from one grit to another, I tell you. <laughs> Clamper in there again. Got another piece here that is about the right size. So just kind of wrap around my block here. I went over with some 80 grit that really just cleaned up the face, got all the, all the uh, file marks out and just got me down to some sanding scratches. One of the things I'm doing as I'm going across the face is, this is my 400 grit pass, I'm going across in two different directions. If you don't think I'm doing this by hand. <laughs> You know, when I turn the camera off, I could go over to the belt sander, but I'm not. I'm doing it by hand, and my hands show it. Um, I'm going across in one direction, and then I'm going across. I'm taking all the scratches out in one direction, then I'm going across in the other direction, taking all the scratches and turning them the other way, and then going across again, making sure that all the, all the previous scratches are all out. And that's just kind of the way I found that works best for me. Um, and I haven't had a problem yet. Moving on to 600, I've got this end done to 600 grit. So I'm going to get the face done to 600. And then I'm going to polish it. Came out pretty good. So there's, oh, there we go. Hammer number two. 
and hammer number three. All done. Put them together because they're both the same brand. Both Long Hu. Both came over on a slow boat from China. This one was a lot slower boat. They don't, weren't on the same boat apparently. Um, faces came out beautifully polished. The other end nicely polished. Nice profile to them. Hope you can see all that. Same with the face. Took care of all them sharp edges. So nothing's going to damage the leather anymore. All we have left to do is put a wrap around that handle to make it just to give it a little more mass. It's a really small handle. When you look at it compared to my hand, it's pretty small. So, there you go. That's three of them down. When you compare these to my Sears Robot Hammer, you can see that they're all different. This, of course, is a vintage hammer. I don't know how old this is. It does say on the back, Sears Roebuck. And I don't know when they dropped the Roebuck. I think it was in the 70s, I want to say. And I don't know when they quit making this style of hammer. But I've had it for a number of years. And I bought it on eBay as a vintage used hammer. So, I like this hammer. But you can see they're all different shapes. The other two are different shapes yet. And, I don't know. We're going to keep these hanging around, maybe. Anyway, that being said, hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. Hit the like button. I appreciate it. I like getting dirty for you. <laughs> and uh, leave a comment. I like reading comments. I like knowing what you guys think of what I'm doing here. And uh, stay safe. God bless. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.